Hi, my name is Jenny. I'm a concept artist and character designer. And um, today I'm testing out a Sketchbook Pro. So it's the first time for me. So I've never used this software before and it was really interesting uh, just to try something else. And as you can see, I got started uh, with a really rough sketch. Um, didn't use a perspective, like a proper perspective grid this time. I just started like with really rough lines. Um, usually I spend, if I spend a lot more time on this, which would normally be one or two days, I think. That's when I would put in like proper grids and references and mood boards. But I thought for today uh, that should be enough. I think in total um, it took me three hours to finish this and uh, I time-lapsed it to half an hour just to um, get a feeling of how I approach my work and I just thought, uh, yeah, see that I can share that with you guys. So what I'm doing here is um, just really roughly sketching in the scene and the characters and what I usually do is I do like a quick scribble on paper before I start and sometimes I scan that in and use it as a base sometimes I don't and I thought for this for today it would be cool just to see it again from scratch doing it uh, in sketchbook so as it's the first time for me using sketchbook uh, it was quite interesting to uh, like just see how it's different from other softwares and yeah I like the layers pretty cool I, I use a lot of layers as you can see and um, there's lots of sketches and background, mid-ground, foreground, so there's a lot of different stuff going on. And um, right now I'm just using the ink brush, which was uh, all I needed for my, for my sketch. But um, as you can see on the left side, um, I already prepared um, a set one, it's called. It's um, just a collection of brushes that I really liked. So what I did was um, I spent 20 minutes on the interface before starting just to know where stuff is and uh, what I could use and what I could do with this. And I uh, made a selection of brushes that I liked. So I got them all in there. A few chalk brushes, a few smudge brushes, and uh, you will see I'm also using a bunch of other ones. But that was really good to get me started. So talking about characters, um, yeah, I'm still working very rough and um, using the adjustment tool. I was quite good as well, can be very helpful. And um, checking, yeah, putting that in opacity, putting it down and um, starting on cleanup now. So I'm usually doing another layer and um, then I'm redoing the whole sketch uh, in a more cleaned up version. And uh, yeah, there can usually be two layers. Sometimes it's free, sometimes it takes me longer. But uh, yeah, that's how I usually work. I don't always use lines. Sometimes I'm going straight into a shading and color, so I just go and paint either over the lines or don't use them at all in the second step. But for today, I thought it might be quite cool to be a bit more graphic and show you this approach. Um, then when I'm designing characters or setting up a scene, what I really, really like is um, thinking about the story and imagining a little moment in time of something happening that reflects character relationships and something going on. Um, I know that lots of productions require you to do turnarounds and just very posed characters um, that don't really show much of their story. But um, when I have a chance like this, I really like to give it a thought and uh, imagine like this little moment of two characters meeting or having a moment and there's just something going on. So we got the little girl here, obviously like a little schoolgirl dressed quite properly, probably not allowed yet to choose her own clothes and obviously in English schools you have to wear a uniform. So she meets this punk girl and uh, obviously she's very interested in her and you can see that she's wearing this little hair thing that she might be something like that one day. It's just a lot open for interpretation and I like these little things that you can see stories in there and imagine like, what's going on in her head and what is the punk girl thinking about her and yeah that's just stuff that goes from my head when I start things like this and uh, making up these little story moments and it just I just feel it gives characters life and just tells you something. So I'm just cleaning this up uh, just adjusting some lines here and uh, polishing a few things where I didn't like angles or folds or 
just minor details. I'm going to do the same for the background, so cleaning that up as well. And uh, on my time I'm working on Disney Infinity the last two years, what we learned from our very amazing art director was that it can be really cool to avoid parallels and uh, symmetric lines. So whenever I do stuff like this now, it's uh, always quite asymmetric with curves going in different directions and nothing really uh, looking perfect. Uh, I really got used to that and I'm kind of liking it now, so that's the style I'm going for. If you uh, see me pop up weird stuff, that is just me being used to my usual shortcuts and I keep hitting E, which apparently is something else here when I'm looking for the eraser. So. That's gonna happen quite a lot, I'm afraid. And yeah, it's really um, interesting if, you, if you're used to one software and then you start something else like this. And uh, it felt really intuitive to me. I really like the, um, the painterly approach it has overall. And um, the brushes are really, really cool. So when I'm getting more into um, painting and coloring in, uh, that was really enjoyable because they got really nice textures to them and uh, are really just really nice to use. So, still doing mid-ground. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, but I usually work on um, a lot of layers. So, as you can see, I've got a bunch there. And um, usually I have my background, mid-ground, foreground. As you can see, all the lines are on different layers and um, all the color is going to be on different layers as well. And I use the lasso tool a lot. Uh, I lock in my shape. Uh, she gets colored in one color at the beginning, then I lock it and that just makes it a lot easier to put my base colors in there. Um, what I didn't say yet, I think I set two um, shortcuts. I set uh, X and Z, uh, which is increase and decrease brush size. I'm just so used to that. That's um, just something I always got my hands on the keyboard. I'm just doing that constantly. So I needed that, that was important. But uh, in general, I'm just going with what I got here. Uh, I got an color palette as you can see. When I have more time I usually spend at least half a day to drop in um, mood boards and references and just a lot of stuff that I like to use as references for my image uh, including colors. But um, as I just did this in I think three and a half hours which was really quite fast for me um, I usually tend to use one or two days for this. So what I did was um, grabbed a few mood images that I liked and uh, had the color palette uh, generated. There are some really nice uh, softwares you can use for that just to give you like something to start on and uh, it just keeps, so it's really nice, it helps you keep consistency sometimes. And uh, yeah, so that's why this is in there. And uh, when I have more time, I usually also spend a lot more on perspective grids and setting up things properly. So this is quite rough. Basically, that's what I'm saying. And moving to the midground now, so I'm done with my characters here. I'm keeping them quite in the same color spectrum because I want to show that they have something in common and uh, there might be a connection between them. And uh, on the background now, yeah, midground, soft, yeah, background. I'm really just playing around here, testing some brushes and colors out. Yeah, that is just me playing with brushes. And um, as you can see, the colors are not overall matching or well-defined yet. Um, it takes me quite a while to get like proper lighting set up. I'm just testing and playing around for, for a bit before I decide on something. And yeah, that's why the layers help, because now I can just work on the mid-ground. And I like putting in different color variations, like the purple and the blue from the top. And that's why the Locking shapes is really good. Yep, cleaning in, cleaning up. So what I'm doing here is uh, just really playing around with colors a bit and uh, testing out some color variation and uh, yeah, just different, different um, aspects and details. So, we got that, yeah, just testing. That's a bit too green, oh well, leaving it for later. Adding in some minor details here uh, for the flyers and having them pop a bit more on the dark background. I'm still hitting the eraser, sorry, it keeps happening. So it's gonna pop up a few more times. Yep, there we go again. 
Uh, that's E, my eraser, and uh, I think I really have to change the shortcut next time. Um, adding some more details. Where am I? Oh, there's the midground back there. Adding an arrow here and a bit of text and a heart and stuff like that just happens spontaneously. You can interpret into that whatever you like. It's just me doodling about. So I'm getting more into um, value separation now. Uh, almost time for shadows. So I'm starting to look into this. And yeah, some more details here, color adjustments here. I'm starting to put in first shades, first shadows, just painting some of them roughly in. But um, usually I would use a clipping mask for that. But uh, here I'm trying something else. So you can see I'm moving around stuff, uh, merging layers, duplicating layers. So what I'm gonna do now is um, put the shadow directly onto the locked layer. So painting over in blue, because I want blue shades, and just testing out some uh, layer properties, seeing what works. And well, the way I'm gonna do it is um, I'm gonna create a light layer, so, and cut that out from my shadow layer. And there we go, one second. Come on, and cut, yes. So quite graphic. Um, what I did, uh, what you can see is I did the on top of my normal layer, I put the blue shadow layer and a soft glow layer on top and basically cut out what I want to be in the shadow from the soft glow. And what you can see what I'm doing here now is I'm erasing some of the shadow out again to get some nice warm bounce light back, which is basically just uh, the layer underneath coming through again, but it just gives it some nice uh, color variety and saturation. So yeah, it does work without clipping masks and uh, actually works quite well. So yeah, I enjoyed that, that was pretty cool. And uh, also trying to get um, a skylight layer in there, which you can see me fiddling about here with. And you will see in a second that um, I actually did not like it and tossed it out again. But uh, yeah, stuff like that is, uh, it happens when I do as well. See, I'm painting it in and um, I keep testing layer properties, screen and uh, lighten usually, but um, for some reason I'm not really liking it. So yeah, uh, I was gonna go down with opacity, so I keep trying that, but um, it just doesn't feel, doesn't feel good to me. So it yeah, gets deleted, gone. And uh, yeah, but this is looking nice. I like my um, shades and going to the midground now. Same thing, uh, duplicating, lots of duplicating. So one more reason to have lots of layers and put the blue shadows over there. But instead of putting a light layer on, I'm just uh, erasing the shadows out of the, um, on top of the normal layer. Changing um, saturation and light uh, and the properties, I think I chose lighten, just to um, see if I can get different colors in there and uh, just getting an overall feel of what works well. Uh, same for the background. So, oh, we're going, yep, yeah, shadows, so we're going to cast shadows now and just dropping those in quite roughly. And what am I doing now? Testing, testing, yep. Yeah. Colors, ah, oh, yeah, going for brightness, contrast. Also, um, layer by layer, starting with the background and um, just usually looking um, what feels good to me. So I'm going for a more reddish pink look now in the ground. And um, it just gave it this really nice matching color for the blues that the girls are wearing. And forgot the rooftop, adding that in, just to show why they're in the shadow and um, where the sunlight is coming from. And painting that in a little more, keeping it quite rough because I want my focus to be on the two girls. So um, everything in the background or even the top and the shadows are just gonna be quite subtle um, not even using line art for that on top. So it's very clear that this is just secondary information. Adding in some light and uh, yeah, I keep saying I use a lot of layers, but I also um, merge down a lot. I know lots of artists that have lots and lots of layers, but I like to see all my layers at least uh, on one side. So whenever I do something like that, I merge down. Even though I duplicate a lot, I just add it all together at the end again just to keep things clean, clear. 
and um, painting over some of that by hand now so enough of the color adjustment tricks it's just um, adding some softer bloom and uh, color adjustments by hand and going to the background yep testing brushes more brushes and I like this one so this is me just really fiddling about and you can see I, I left my set one brush palette and now I'm just playing about um, testing all the texture brushes and uh, just uh, putting down some some colors and shapes and it was really really enjoyable I really liked it really, it felt very painterly so after all the clean line arts that I did in the beginning that was really refreshing I was really nice to play around with and uh, yeah some more and no I did not like this one so that goes and cutouts again yep like my cutouts so duplicating and uh, cutting out the non lit up areas and smudging them in a bit uh, I really like the smudge tools they're way more prominent in in the software and you got lots of different of these synthet synthetic paint brushes, oh, that's how you call it. And um, I love how they just merge with the colors and they feel really, really traditional, which is really cool. So you get this whole painterly feeling. And uh, yeah, still on those. Uh, I think I'm smudging a lot as well. Uh, I love the smudge brush just to get this overall soft feeling to it. And yeah, I just had uh, a lot of fun with these leaves. Yeah, going in, somewhere here. Um, yeah, it was a bit too much brown behind the girl. I wanted her to pop a bit more and have for some breathing space between them. So the blue gives it more contrast. Um, working into the shades on this side. And I usually work very saturated. So I tend to just paint over and subtle things out slightly. So yeah. That is uh, looking good so far. Got some yellow warmer lights in there. Painting over the mid-ground as well. Everything is on locked layers still, by the way. So we got the line out on top and the color layers below. And whenever I'm working on the color layers, um, I'm locking them to make sure that I'm not painting accidentally on the foreground or background. So this is a bit more painterly after my quite technical start uh, where it's all about just cutting out layers um, I get a bit more into details like that and just add bounce lights and a few yeah, value differences. Cleaning up the roof and uh, doing some minor bits and bobs here, more bounce lights and where are we going next? More, yeah, a bit of red from the rooftop coming back down here. Uh, a bit more contrast around these two girls. And yes, getting there. So, how am I going for the next step? Nope, still, still shading. Adding a bit more here and there. And yeah, that's usually what um, takes me personally the longest. Just a, a mix of cleanup and adding details. Um, I'm quite quick with my sketches, so I do a lot of um, animatics and storyboards as well. So I really like just doing rough scribbles and uh, just leaving things, um, yeah, quite quite sketchy. So when I, as I said, when I go into stuff like that, I take quite a long time. Um, another thing we learned at Disney Infinity is the very blue, purpley, saturated shades, which uh, can pop really nicely and give it a nice uh, color. And I kind of adapted that after working on that for a few years. So yeah, still doing that, still liking that. Um, now I'm just cleaning up a bit, cutting out some edges to get it into a nice frame. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna work on that now. Um, more details, because we don't have enough details. We need a bit more, uh, more bounce light. And uh, yeah, I love, I love the colors here. So the brushes are really helpful for that as well. And um, in other softwares I would just spend a lot of time lowering opacity and going up and down but here the brushes just uh, perfectly merge the colors together which is really really nice so it um, feels like painting in, in oil or watercolors uh, which is really really cool. So I should be almost done with that. Just a bit more. There we go. 
doing some fine color checks, doing some final adjustments, some more light in her hair. And are we moving on to lines? No, oh, almost, almost there. Yeah, I can spend quite a lot of time on that. So sometimes uh, time constraints, like having been told to only have a specific time is quite good. So it makes me move along faster. Otherwise I could be spending hours on this, just cleaning edges and smoothing things out, which you basically don't really see if you don't look for it too closely. So having a looser approach and just uh, getting the message across is uh, sometimes uh, good enough. Especially um, if you're thinking character and concept design, uh, it's very important just to have things quickly done sometimes. You can't really spend a lot of time on polishing. And uh, yeah, that's also something I learned. And uh, yeah, so it's quite nice being reminded that there are deadlines and you've got to be fast. Here I'm trying um, the light again. So finally, next step, uh, the thing I messed up before I didn't like. And um, this time I'm not duplicating the layer. I'm uh, having my light selection on top and I'm actually paint brushing it in. And um, as I don't have a clipping mask, uh, I'm just going to clean up the edges afterwards. But that's working fine and I can smudge all that in easily, which is really cool. And uh, softening out a few edges here so it's a bit um, more ambient. So that's looking cool. I like that. Opacity down a bit. Uh, screen layer, always very nice. And uh, yeah, that looks a lot better than the one I used before. So happy with that, merging it down. And now, what's next? Are we going to line out? Yes, we should. All right, okay, brightness, contrast first. So what I do is picking my layer separately, uh, duplicating first, of course, so I can compare before and after. And I just check if I can do any improvements in hue, saturation, brightness, color. And uh, I just compare like the changes I made with what I had before and I do that for each layer separately. So what I found here is that, um, uh, not in the midground yet, but especially in the background, that I like the overall reddish pink feel. So I'm going more that direction and I'm keeping some bits in here that I like and erasing some I didn't. So cutting some of that out, yeah, like that. And yeah, background. So here I um, actually discovered that I liked this really pinkish feel, gave it a really nice flair. So I test that a few times, switching it on and off, checking colors and uh, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Merging it down. And next step is uh, lines. So what I do here is uh, sometimes I, I keep the lines, uh, sometimes I don't do lines at all or just paint straight in shapes over my rough scribble. So for here I wanted to keep the lines, but I wanted them to be a bit more smooth and subtle, uh, matching the background and especially the tree that has no lines at all. So I am yeah, adding a bit more subtle lines to it. I'm basically just coloring them in. So I've got the lines uh, layer locked and I'm just selecting the closest color, making it a bit darker and um, yeah, just painting over them testing out some colors that was a bit too saturated for my taste so I went back a bit got a bit more subtle and uh, happy with that cleaning up again a bit where shape and lines don't match properly same for the girl uh, smoothing her out a bit and I was playing around with the eyes but that looked a bit creepy so I made them darker it was a bit cuter and um, yeah cleaning her up and I was thinking about um having some of the lines facing the sun brighter, which I was testing here with the bag, but um, it didn't really work that well in my opinion. So I kept them dark, uh, even on the sun side. And uh, it's working quite well, I think. So lines done for the characters, quite happy with that. And going into the mid-ground now. So doing the same here, just uh, painting over and here it's actually quite cool because here I did what I didn't want to do on the characters. Um, I made some of the lines brighter. So they're actually um, yeah, getting a lot of the bounce light and skylight now, especially you can see the trees reflecting on that and some yellow lights here, which uh, 
works quite nicely. So I don't mind losing the lines here where it's um, still kind of background, backgroundish. So as long as the characters pop, I'm happy with that and that's all good for me. And yeah, moving on to the midground, cleaning that up, adding the edges and lines and that's looking good. So things I liked overall, um, uh, the zoom tool is pretty cool. I uh, got used to that really quickly actually and started using it quite a lot. And um, I would have liked to test the Copic markers, which I didn't have time for this time. Uh, that looked like a really cool palette as well. And these two little buttons on the right side, which I thought were really cool, but I just didn't get to using them as I wanted to. I'll definitely give that another try. So yeah, really cool. Um, what I'm doing next is uh, oh, yes, uh, duplicating lots and lots of layers. So what I'm doing now is um, I'm actually going to merge everything down because I'm quite happy with where everything is. And just to make sure that I keep the layers for later, I'm just going to throw in the group, make sure everything is there and uh, yeah, uh, make it invisible and keep it for later. Duplicating again. So the merged layer, everything is down on one layer now, background, midground, foreground. And what I'm doing now is literally just polishing up. So getting everything together, cleaning up, lines, connections, or just uh, dirty strokes, something that didn't work out earlier. And uh, yes, so that is the um, very intuitive, fun part where it's more painterly. So as I said, I start quite graphic and quite um, shape-based at the beginning, but I do like the just painting approach as well. It um, both, yeah, both has um, its uh, good sides and bad sides. So combining it all together uh, is quite cool. I like that. And yeah, this is just me cleaning up, finishing everything, um, edges and stuff, getting some of the lines out, keeping some of the lines in. And uh, yeah, so overall, um, that was pretty cool. I was uh, quite tough, especially because I'm really used to a lot of sh um, shortcuts that I couldn't use. So a lot of the times I was just focusing on not hitting the E button, which would just pop up something else. And uh, But uh, the interface, really nice, um, works really well for me. I uh, love the brushes, they're super cool. I'm a big fan of the smudge tool. And I think I also used the blur tool at some point, which was really good. Um, got the most important um, adjustment layers and settings, which is really cool, because I do a lot of uh, color adjustments and lighting up or darkening things. So I like that, that's pretty nice. And yeah, I definitely think I'll give it another go. And um, I hope this somehow showed you a bit about my approach. It seems quite straightforward to me, but um, who knows. I would have liked to use um, the symmetry tool as well. That would be something cool to test next time, uh, especially for character design, could be quite interesting. And I'm um, definitely going to give um, more of these brushes another round because um, I really like the flow and how they merge into each other. And uh, yeah, generally it's an overall more painterly feeling, which is quite cool, feels more traditional in a way. So uh, one thing I realized as well is um, I think I started on quite small canvas. So this is something I'd look into next time, just make sure to get so it doesn't get too pixely when I zoom in, like you can see in here. It's uh, also just basically my fault choosing a wrong resolution. Works fine when you um, go full screen when you zoom out and it's 100%, but right now I think we're at 240 and yeah, it's getting quite pixely and harder to work with. Just something uh, I've got to check next time. And uh, yeah, finishing up here, uh, cleaning up this and adding a bit more text here. Blur tool, yes, that was cool, like that. And uh, just checking, uh, merging down my duplicated layers, cleaning up and uh, doing a final overall adjustment just to check if I like all the colors together. And uh, yeah, checking both layers, adding them together and just uh, looking if there's anything else I can do. No, um, I'm good, happy, pretty cool. And yeah, that's it. There we go. Uh, I hope that was somewhat helpful. Um, I think I learned a lot and uh, just want to say thanks uh, Autodesk and ArtStation for inviting me to do this and uh, yeah, 
hope it was fun watching.